my little grungy heart is beating a little faster today than on other days. Look what finally arrived. Oh, I'm so excited. I have Scorched Timber, the final distress color by Ranger Inc. and Tim Holtz on my desk here today. And I would like to swatch this color with you. And I also want to take the chance to use Scorched Timber as an example of how I organize my Ranger mediums here in my craft studio. So if you are curious about the new color and or searching for organization tips and tricks, especially on small space, then this video is for you. Hi there, this is Luisa Heinzel. <laughs> what an exciting day. Nice to see you here today. So we are going to swatch this color here first and then later on I'm going to show you how I put all of these things here into my organization system here in my craft room. That means this color is going to get a home in my swatch box here today. If you have missed the other videos about this box and how I made this and what is behind this box, I mean system wise, then you can find a whole playlist about this box linked down below this video. In here, I have all of my Ranger mediums on swatches. That doesn't mean that you need Ranger mediums to make such a box. Of course not. So meaning you could use this system for every other brand as well. In here there are only Ranger mediums because I only use Ranger. Yeah, so that is what I love and that is what I use. But you could use this idea for any other brand, of course, as well. There are several videos available. Uh, uh, ooh, I'm so sorry. About how I made this. The playlist is linked down below. So for every color in the Ranger palette I have a little booklet and I have swatched the mediums of the color in this little booklet. So meaning if something is empty then I don't have the mediums that are on this page normally and if I have for example a color where I have all mediums then of course um, the whole booklet is filled. So let's take Lumberjack Plaid as an example. This is how it would look when um, such a booklet is completely filled, but there's still space for adding more things, of course. I wanted to have this booklet style thing so that I also have the chance to take different kinds of papers and um, that I always have the chance to add more in here so that I later on then have a booklet for each color and I can easily see what I have and how it comes out on different papers. So that means the first thing that we need is <clears throat> such a little booklet and all of the components that belong to such a booklet in my system here. I made this little folder with the help of a die card. I will give you the name and the number here on the top of the screen. And this, and that is, I think, the most asked question <laughs> about my swatches. This is just some watercolor paper. I can recommend to use the paper which you use the most for your pa uh, projects um, to make the swatches. Because it doesn't help if you use watercolor paper like I do here, just because I do it. If you don't use watercolor paper for your projects, yeah, please use as the base what you use the most. And then here for the inside, I have also some other things that I want to put here, meaning paper wise. So that are also papers I use really, really often in my projects. So this is just some coffee dyed paper. In my junk journals I often use coffee dyed paper so I use this for my swatches as well. One will go to this page, I will explain later why, and another one will go to this page. Another thing that I also use very often in my junk journal projects are book pages. So this is just a piece of a coffee dyed book page and then I also have often some black paper. So this is just some black, yeah, you know, from a relatively cheap paper pad, I would say, because I want to use black to see how the oxide spray comes out on black. So this is 
going to uh, be here later. I don't need that here because this is the page for the spray stain, meaning the spray stain is not visible on black, so I don't need that here. So while this is drying, we can start with the front here and make this first and then later on when we come to this uh, inside and both of these pages, then the glue has dried and we will have no problems. On each of my swatches, I make an oxide ink background first over the whole page here. So let's take Scotched Timber Oxide ink. <laughs> I'm so excited. So I'm going to move my plate here to the left so that you can see that better. So I'm going to take the oxide ink and I put a little bit to my mat. Then I'm going to take some water and I start making a background like I would do it for a card or a tag or whatever, just, you know, dipping it in, drying it, dipping it in, drying it and so on to get really nice layers. Oh my goodness. Oh. I want more water for this first layer. Holy moly guacamole. This is only the first layer and I'm already in love. This is grunge perfection. So cool. So then I want to have a circle here in the middle, which shows the oxide ink, but just brushed on without any water. So then I'm going to take one of my other swatches as a template because I want to stamp a butterfly but on the circle and on the background as well and I of course I mean I'm a perfectionist I want to have this butterfly in exactly the same spot on all of the swatches so I'm going to take this find out the position of the butterfly with the help of this and then I can easily stamp it to the other swatch So then I'm going to glue the circle down. So that I then can stamp again. I'm also going to splatter some white and black splatters to the oxide ink here. The white on the top and the black on the bottom to see how those come out on the oxide ink. And if you need more information about this whole thing and more detailed information, then please check out the playlist. I have, um, in the other videos, I have explained way more in detail what I thought when I made this. So if you want to dive more into detail about the single mediums and how I swatch them and what I'm thinking and what this... Um, how this helps me later, then you can find more details in the other videos. I'm relatively surprised about the color of these white splatters. That looks absolutely fantastic. They get stained, of course, but um, it's not such a weird staining like with some of the other oxide colors. Sometimes you get, you know, this like weird red or like pinkish color sometimes um, depending on the oxide color of course but this is like really harmonious I can see a tiny 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 bit of purple or something a brownish purple but this looks absolutely amazing and in combination with black holy cow look how cool is that so then we can go on with 
the inside of this booklet. For these pages, I want to use the oxide spray here on the left side and the spray stain on the right. This looks a little bit like hot chocolate. <laughs> For the oxide spray, I like to start drying it and then add some water to see how that comes out. Oh god! Oh god! Ah! <laughs> oh my goodness! On coffee dyed paper this is just... Oh my goodness! I have to call my friend Nicole at Nature Spirit Journals. She also already has scotched timber on her desk. And I have to ask her, oh, I can compare that with my, my pages in the journal she has sent me. Uh, I'm just thinking that looks like her um, paper with rust water. So cool. Look at this here on the coffee dyed paper. That is absolutely, definitely my absolute favorite thing I mean I love the other papers as well and how the or how the spray comes out on the other papers but this is just amazing and that totally reminds me to Nicole's results with her rust uh, papers I will um, link Nicole's channel down below for you uh, Nicole has a German channel but uh, I think you can also follow what she is doing there just by watching the videos. And of course, if you have any questions, just write an English comment and she is going to answer you in English as well. Because she understands English and she can write a little bit of English, but um, she can't speak English so well. She, I don't say that, but she says that about herself. Yeah, <laughs> so, but she's able to answer you in English if you have questions. That is so interesting. At first glance, this looks like when you when you spray it down, it looks like ground espresso somehow. And then when it starts to dry, it gets totally different. So this was now, of course, the um, spray stain. So let's add some water here as well. So then let's go to the back side here. On this page, I want to swatch the oxide ink refiller on the very top. Then the ink refiller as the next little swatch area. And then I'm going to make a circle using this thing here as a template to swatch the ink. and. Then I have a little space here for the watercolor pencil and the crayon. And perhaps you might ask for the reason to swatch the refillers. Because normally, I mean, this is meant to refill the oxide ink pad. And this is meant to refill the ink pad and the mini ink pad. Yeah, But I use those mediums for like normal things as well yeah for for some techniques i use the refillers directly from those bottles and for that i want to know how they come out and that's the reason why i do this here if you don't use these things directly from the bottle then just leave this part of the swatch out then you don't need that of course so i'm going to take a tiny little bit of this and then i'm going to spritz some water Then let's do the same for the ink refiller. So then let's test these little guys. They are new and probably 
this is a little bit stupid to use them for what I'm doing now, but why not? I want to know how these are. Oh my goodness, so cute. They are called Tiny Blending Tool. And I want to use this little guy here to make the circle here with the Scorched Timber ink. So let's do this. Ooh! Don't move this, Louise. Just, just don't move it, okay? Perfect. This is just good. And perhaps it's even not so stupid because here is a relatively small space. And of course I don't want to, ooh, I don't want to smear here to the paper. So here I'm going to add water to one half of this circle. So then let's go on with the crayon and the watercolor pencil here. Oh my goodness. This is definitely the color of my dreams. Oh. I'm going to let this dry for a moment. For the embossing glaze swatch, I want to use a portion of this stamp from the Faded Type set by Stampers Anonymous and Tim Holtz. And I'm stamping this over three different colors, black, white and coffee dyed. And here on the other side, I'm going to take my embossing dabber and just make a solid area. Perhaps you think, why the heck is she doing this on black? Because it's not visible. For some colors that is true and that is really, you know, <laughs> a little weird. But for some other colors it's not so weird because they show up on black. And even here, yeah, perhaps Perhaps it's a dream <laughs> or something, an illusion. But I have the feeling that the black here changed the color and that you can see some of that scorched timber color on the black as well. But to be honest, it's mainly black on black and like glossy black on matte black. But as I said, with other colors, for example, oh, we have Lumberjack Flat here on the desk. Look here. With Lumberjack Plaid, it's totally different. You can see the red here. And for, for example, Halloween projects or something else, this could be a really great effect. And then it's helpful to know how it comes out on black. <clears throat> and this looks absolutely amazing. I especially love the color on the coffee dyed area of this thing. Really, really cool. So then we have the paint and for the paint I want to make a little tag from the same watercolor paper I've used before. And now I'm curious if they have put these, oh yes, we don't throw this away, we let this dry and then we have a little piece of art. <laughs> So I'm going to paint this on and then blend it with, with a little bit of water. For the paint swatches of my other colors, I have also made a back side of this tag where I have black acrylic paint here on the bottom and the white watercolor paper on the top and then I've splattered to this tag as you can see but in the meantime I found out that I don't need this I really never use this part of the swatch so I will save the back side of this little tag for something else instead of wasting it for something that I don't need <laughs> I love this 
greenish undertone in in the in this color. I mean, it's not only uh, visible in the paint, but I think it's extreme in the paint. Extremer than in the other mediums. But uh, wait, that's not completely true because the crayon also has this greenish undertone. Can you see that? It's really in the camera. It looks really crazily green. <laughs> The watercolor pencil has dried in the meantime as well and look how reddish that came out that's nearly orange that is totally cool okay so then i'm going to take the oxide ink i'm going to ink all around the edges of this little booklet and then also with the oxide ink i take this and I want to color this little tab there and also here, this this little line here that has mainly aesthetic reasons. I also do that on, have I done that on the back of the others as well? Yes, I do that on the back as well. Um, that, that is just, you know, my perfectionism and somehow this gene that I want to have my swatches artsy <laughs> has no special reason. So now I'm, I'm going to print the label for here. Oh no. My, the battery of my label printer is obviously empty. Oh no. Yeah, okay, so I will do that later. That's not so important. I will do that later. So it will then look, I'm so sorry, it will then look exactly like this. I'm printing on a, or I will print on a transparent label so that the color of this tab comes through and that I have then the black letters on the color itself. Okay, so then <laughs> when we have all of these, I will later on, I mean, I will let, um, especially this, I will let that dry before I put everything together so that I can make sure that everything is really totally dry, especially here on the areas where the, the re-inkers are. Make sure that everything is totally dry and then everything will go together later and it will go into my swatch box here in between of pumice stone and ground espresso, meaning here. So let's now talk about this. <laughs> this is how I organize my Ranger mediums. So this is basically the area over my desk. So here is what you've just seen in the other part of the video. This is my media mat. And then when I look to my walls, I have everything here in front of me. And while I'm filming this, I'm just realizing that this looks way, way bigger than it in reality is. I have the feeling when you see this in the camera that you could think you need a lot of space for this, but that's not the truth. It's, I think, because of the angle of my camera, it is really not much. My oxide ink pads and the few ink pads I have are there on the bottom. I mean, on the shelf, but, you know, on the bottom of the rest. So perhaps you can get an imagination of the size of the rest. I'm really hoping that because this is really a system in my eyes that doesn't need much space. So if you have a small corner somewhere in your apartment or if you only have a small craft room, then in my eyes, this is a really good solution. So let's start with how I organize my mediums here on the bottom. So as you can see, I have these little things where the ink pads are in, you can staple, staple, I think that's not the right word, <laughs> staple is not the right word, it's stapeln in German, So, but I guess it's not staple in, in English, you can put them on top of each other so that you can have all of your ink pads or oxide ink pads in there, and I have them here in the order of the Ranger color palette, of course, so it starts here with sponge sugar and then it goes like so to the right and then the next color is here and you can read the color palette in these rows horizontally 
As I said before, I mainly have the oxide ink pads. So I have all of the oxide colors. And if I have the ink, then it's directly next to the oxide. So for example, here, this is Uncharted Mariner, oxide ink. So next to that, there's the ink pad, Uncharted Mariner. Or for example, here, Vintage Photo. On the right, there's the ink pad vintage photo really easily to see if i have the ink or not because when you look from far away you can immediately see where those black cases of the ink pads are and you can see this is an ink pad this is an ink pad lumberjack plaid is an ink and so on yeah so um, that means i can immediately see which inks i have and i know the rest is oxide and um I've mainly done this so that I have the oxide ink pads and the ink pads here on the bottom because it's more handy. And <clears throat> putting those ink pads and oxide ink pads into those shelves would really be a problem because imagine you have an ink pad, how do you store that? I mean, if I lay it flat into the shelf, then it's really not handy. I, it's hard to get it out. If I put it like so, then it could happen that the lid comes off because it has nothing that is like a closure or something. And I found that really, really stress stressing. So um, I have put them into this little um, rack here. I think rack is the right word, isn't it? So then let's talk about the area which is above this ink pad rack it's the same idea behind that like here um palette wise if i can say it like that so let's go here to the right i had to split this because i have not so much space but it's the same procedure <laughs> <laughs> with this thing it starts here on the left with spun sugar the first color in the ranger palette and then we can read those lines exactly like we would read like lines in a book we go here like so it's the order of the palette from ranger and then i have to go here because here it's uh, is the rest so then we can go on with salt water taffy there and it goes here like so and then we skip this little area there and then we go on here and you can read this like lines in a book. Then it goes from here, you know, that is the order of the Ranger palette and you can easily see uh, which colors are next to each other. And it's of course the same order like we have here. So with time, you automatically know which colors are next to each other because when you see that there, you always like read the names, remember the names, and then it's way, way easier to find out which colors are next to each other, which colors are like, you know, good combinations as well because I don't only look like in rows, but I also jump from here to there sometimes, yeah, and skip some colors but with this i have the perfect overview about color combinations about what i have of course and all of that stuff and every single color uh let me let me show you that on an example where i have a lot or nearly everything um let's do uncharted mariner so here for example this is uncharted mariner <clears throat> If I have the mini ink pad, it is on the very left, the first thing that I have here. Then I have here a little jar where my blending brush is and my crayon. Behind the jar, if it is in my collection, I have the Distress Spray Stain directly behind the jar. Meaning, if I look to another color, let's just jump here to the right. Uh, but it's the same for every single color. Let's jump to Walnut Stain. If I have the spray stain, it's directly behind the jar. You can see it there. And, you know, this is not much space. And I can't see what's written on the bottle. But with knowing that the spray stain has this top thing, 
And with knowing that the spray stain is behind this jar, I know I have the spray stain. Do you know what I mean? So it's always there if I have it. If I don't have it, this space is empty. Why are here two? Because I need two walnut stain <laughs> spray stains. The one uh, on the left is nearly empty and this is already my, my backup bottle, which you can see there. So that's the reason why there are two bottles. So let's go back to Uncharted Marina, which we've used as an example. Then let, let me put this out of the way because I accidentally have two of these. So then we have the glaze here and the oxide spray behind that. Here in the very back, there's the matching mica stain spray. If I have two different colors that in my eyes match Uncharted Mariner, I mean mica stain spray colors, then they are there. This is the ink refiller and this is the oxide refiller. And this is the paint. And if you look at this, you can see that you can see and identify each different medium at first glance. So I have put those like size wise into that shelf so that I can see everything. I know, for example, that the ink refiller has this like squishy thing on top. So I know that must be the ink refiller. It can't be anything else. And if you know the bottles and the shape of the bottles, you can immediately see what is in that shelf and what is where and what you have. <laughs> so that means I have a little, I think I have a little different system than other people have because um, I have often seen people having like those shelves, like those acrylic shelves, but then they have all of their oxide sprays in one row sorted by color of course then all of their spray stains in one row sorted by color then all of their embossing glazes all of their paints so that you know you have then one color palette per medium yeah meaning if i would have one shelf for my oxide sprays then all of the oxide sprays would be there one shelf for the paint then all of the paints would be there and i see many people doing it like that and uh, if you want to know the whole truth, I have done that in the beginning as well. In the beginning, when I constructed this, I had it exactly like that. But then I found out that that is not helpful. Because if I decide that I want to use Uncharted Mariner, or if I think, okay, today is um, a walnut stain day, <laughs> then I can immediately immediately see which mediums I have and which mediums fit my project. If I think, okay, this would be great with oxide spray and I want to use walnut stain and I would have to look to a row of oxide sprays here and search if I have walnut stain, that would drive me crazy. And of course, I don't always take out my swatch box to look if I have the medium. yeah. For the most mediums, I know if I have them or not, but I take the swatch box out to see how the medium comes out and not to know if I have the color, if that makes sense. So this system is for me just the perfect solution. And another cool thing, what you can see here is, let me just jump to the yellows there. Look, can you see that? You can see I have a lot of the mediums of wild honey. And fossilized ember is also not so <laughs> bad. I have some of those, but here is a really big gap. So if I think about adding more mediums to my collection, then I can immediately see from which color I don't have so much. Yeah. So if I have saved a little bit more money and I want to invest that into some more mediums, then I can see I could stock up on my yellows because I don't have so much yellow um, or the same for the oranges it's it's here it's like the same look it's not so full here so that means uh, there is something missing definitely I definitely need um, here some ripe persimmon spray and that stuff but you can see what you have it's like like an inventory uh, visual inventory thingy do you know what i mean you don't need a list or something because you can immediately see what you have and what you don't have and i think that is really um cool um if you're wondering where my metallic paints are i have them separately there um they are oh god 
this is really far away when I hold my camera like that. I'm hopefully I'm not shaking. I have put them there because uh, just because uh, my shelf is too small. Yeah, because um, this is really like the maximum of what I can have here. Otherwise, I would need to take these away to expand the shelves to to the left but then it's really hard to reach when i stand here i can open this and these are i can take them out uh, so that is it's not necessary that i open it and look what is inside and take it out i can take them out completely these little drawers so that is okay but if the shelf for my mediums would go until there it would be really uh, yeah not really but relatively hard to reach the very end here but i am assuming that one day that thing will happen because so i mean that i remove this <laughs> because when i made space today for scorched timber i realized that i already have a space problem and that i yeah sometimes had to also move the bottles a little closer to each other so that they don't take so much space uh, because this is what I need for scorched timber and this is already my plan B for the rest. Can you see? I have this wooden box here instead of this acrylic shelf and that is of course not the perfect solution. It's a little weird. Also here for black and white I have put um, several things like the crayons and the watercolor pencils and some Stabilo oil pens together into this bigger jar just to save some space but that is not uh, finished yeah this is not the end of the day because this drives me crazy um <laughs> until yesterday i had here in this wooden thing all of my pastes and uh, other things look all of this stuff here so i have parked that here so this is also not the best solution because um i can i mean the good thing is i can read everything I don't like to have uh, those jars in a basket, for example, so that I could uh, take that out. For example, here on my desk, I also have some baskets that I can take out with things that I need on a daily basis. But if I would have those jars with the texture pastes and so on in here, I had that and it has driven me crazy. So I wanted to have them like so, so that I can also immediately see what I have. Um, what is going to get empty for example and I can read the names here and I can also sort them by yeah like a logical thing you know here is all grid paste then here we have sparkle and crackle and the normal texture paste and also black and um, you know translucent and uh, opaque and that is like reading a book for me. Yeah, that is like, like a catalog of the things that I have. But the problem is, if I want to if I want to take them out, if I want to have this one here, I would need to take this off and then take this. It's not a big deal, I know. But you know that I make videos. And when I sit on my desk here, not on my desk, at my desk here, and... Um, my hands are here, you know, and I want to take my hand and go to the right while I'm talking with you in the video and I want to take, for example, this, then I could do it blind if there were like, you know, little apartments f for the single things here instead of ha um, having... I, I, instead of the need that I have to take this off and then take this that's really annoying when I make videos so this is not the end of the day another little problem of this like plan b solution that I've just talked about is the different size of the shelves <clears throat> look here in the beginning I mean when I made this whole um, area here I had all of these like smaller shelves um, you can see they are not so deep than these that I have now here. So um, these are the new ones. They are way deeper and they can hold way more mediums behind each other. And that's the reason why I um, have exchanged them. But the problem was when these deeper ones have been delivered, two of them were broken. So I couldn't replace this thing with such a bigger thing so that here is still this smaller 
shelf. And that also has the problem that my system here is not like on those which are deeper. But I mean, for me, that is not a problem, but I just wanted to explain that um, so that you are not confused when we now take scorched timber and put that in here because we will not be able to do that like I've just explained with Uncharted Mariner with this like method here. That is not possible because the shelf is not deep enough. But of course, I want to put my scorched timber mediums in here now. So let's do that. I've already prepared this little glass. This is just my oxide ink blending brush. This goes in here like so. And then normally the mini ink pad would go here in front of this. But of course, this is now not possible because the shelf is not deep enough. So we will skip this and put that then somewhere else when we can see how much space the rest is going to take. So then the next thing that we are going to need here is the spray stain, which goes then here. And then we have the oxide spray. Then the glaze. And then the refillers of the ink and the oxide ink. And then last but not least the paint. And then I can see a little space here where I can put my mini ink pad. No! <laughs> I thought it would work. Oh no, this is not good. This is on this edge here now. That is definitely not good because when I want to take out this, then this will fall off every single time. So let's see if we can move the paint a little more to the back and then put this here. Yeah, that works. And then we can also put the watercolor pencil and the crayon into the little jar. Whew. So I think that's it. Welcome, Scorched Timber. Now you are here in your new home. Ah, I'm so happy. This is just so cool. I mean, this whole thing is not only an organization system for me, but it's at the same time really like eye candy. And... It is a collection, yes, and I love working with the, those mediums, yes, but at the same time, it's a collection. Do you know what I mean? It's not only my mediums that I need for doing what I do. It's not only that I have all of this um, because I need that for, for, for making a living. Yeah, because, you know, YouTube and my Etsy shop and all of that, my that what I do here. I do that for a living, but it's not that it is like only tools, mediums, things that I need to do my work. It's also something that really warms my heart that I have all of this. And it's, I know I'm, I'm a freak. I know that I am a freak and I need all of this in my life. And I <laughs> can totally understand if you say this is freaky and this is like too much. I, I totally get that. But I think um, that is not the point. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Everyone should have what he or she wants to have. And I have um, collected all of these things over the past years. It has uh, taken a really long time to get all of this. Oopsie. <laughs> Editing Louise here. It's already the next morning. You can see I'm in my morning outfit. And while I was editing my video yesterday evening, I was so proud because I thought, yay, it's already finished. I'm really fast today. And then I realized I totally forgot to put both of these into my ink pad rack. And I could hear yesterday evening, I could hear a little like crying, really, really silent, but it was there. And now I know from where it came. It was because both of these want to have a home as well, of course. <sighs> and <laughs> what I also forgot is I wanted to show you how I um, have my pins displayed in my craft room here. So let's quickly do that. And then this video will go to YouTube. Ah. Okay, so let's do this. 
<laughs> since scorched timber has to go in between of ground espresso and pumice stone, I have to move all of these two of these little things to the left so uh, that I have then a space here. Now Uncharted Marina, Oxide and Ink is not next to each other anymore. Oh no! Ah! Okay. Since I've said it in this video, I think it's like a reminder. When I search for Uncharted Marina Ink the next time. I've also put some labels to the cases here. Für mich ein normales Wort. So, ah, jetzt ist das Gejammer auch nicht mehr so groß. Now it looks just perfect. Ah, wonderful. And for my pins, I have this thing here. This originally was just one of these green cutting mats that you use for, you know, cutting things with with a sharp knife I've glued some paper and then I have made some holes so that these little needles from the pin that are on the back side of each pin can go through these little holes and now um, I have to wait for a man with the screwdriver not that I can't open these screws but I don't have a screwdriver here at the moment <laughs> so that is really easy to um, to change or to add to this thing. I just have to open these little screws here um, in the corners and then I can take it off and then I can just put more pins into this little thing. I mean, now I can't put more pins into the thing because this is the last one and that is, uh, you know fulfilling my collection here then but if you want to do something like this in your own craft room then you could easily remove it from the wall and add more pins i think this i, I like this i really like this and now um this has of course to go here in between of ground espresso and pumice stone meaning these have to move um one spot to here and then i can put that in here later i hope that this was informative for you and I hope that you could find some tips and tricks from this video for your own organization system and of course I'm hoping we will see the next time I have some I would say really cool things in the pipeline for you <laughs> so see you the next time bye bye